access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. The Varsity Podcast Network, now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today. The exclusive home of the Huskies. This is the Yukon Sports Network from Learfield. What are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says. Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on... SmokeyBear.com with many other wildfire prevention tips. Right. Thanks, honey bear. Because remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Mario fue pintor más de 30 años. Cuando me dijo que se le estaban olvidando las cosas, fue difícil. Un día me dijo, me dijeron que pintara el marco del lado por dentro y pinté el lado de afuera. Yo le di a la gente que le diga a su familia lo que está pasando con él. Si algo se nota diferente, podría ser Alzheimer. Es momento de hablarlo. Visita alz.org diagonal nuestras historias para saber más. Un mensaje de The Alzheimer's Association y The Ad Council. Five-time national champions. This is UConn Huskies men's basketball. Back to Spencer is open for the moment for three. And he hits it. Play-by-play coverage of today's game is presented all season long by Key Bank, the exclusive retail bank of UConn men's basketball. Today's game is also sponsored by Big Y, your family market. It's more than food. It's my Big Y. Brown, Pandaris, and Scott. With BPS lawyers, you get more more than a lawyer, you get a law firm. Dime Bank. Community banking lives here. Duncan. Yukon runs on Duncan. JT Gamo Hartford. Connecticut's number one place for tux rentals and men's fashion. Last Fly Airport Parking. We've got lots to offer. Lewis Real Estate. The exclusive real estate company of Yukon Athletics. Looking to buy or sell? Call 860-404-2655. Lippincott Van Lines. The definition of moving excellence magna physical therapy potential through physical therapy magna pt.com mitchell auto group mitchell jeep is connecticut's newest jeep retailer at their all-new state-of-the-art dealership offering exceptional customer service in the community for over 100 years orthopedic associates of hartford make your move live your life connect with the top orthopedic specialists at oahct.com trantolo and trantolo Connecticut's personal injury law firm, WFSB. Trust Connecticut's largest, most experienced team of meteorologists. The first alert weather team, only on Channel 3 Eyewitness News. And by UConn Health, the official health care provider of UConn Athletics. That'll do it. And the Huskies storm the center of the court. And the Big East Tournament is theirs. We're minutes away from tip-off. Let's go to our Big Y broadcast location, live from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Alongside Wayne Norman, here's Mike Crispino. Well, not exactly Mike Crispino. Zach Linfield back with you inside the network studios as our extended pregame continues here after Northwestern and Florida Atlantic played into the extra period as we get you set for the round of 64 in Brooklyn between UConn and Stetson, the number one overall seed, the UConn Huskies after Winning the Big East title for the first time since 2011, sweeping both the regular season and the tournament title. And the Stetson Hatters, a small school in Florida. This will be the first ever meeting between the Huskies and the Hatters. And they are 100th overall in offensive efficiency. They shoot the ball well from beyond the arc at 36.5%. That's 37th in the country. 41.8% of their field goals attempted are from beyond the arc. All of the rotation players, except for the starting center, will let it fly from three-point land, and they're also good at shooting the free-throw line. They're 35th in the country. They shoot from the stripe at 76.5%. They're 95th in the country, shooting from the floor, two-point percentage at 525 and they don't turn the ball over all that much. They're in the top third of the country when it comes to that ranking. Here is the big issue for Stetson. They're 342nd overall 
in, def- in defensive efficiency out of 360 overall teams. 25th in free throw weight, sub 200 in every every defensive metric, every single one of them. And their best wins include a win against Charlotte, 79-75. And they also beat UCF, 85-82, to in what is nicknamed the Donnie Jones Bowl, which I hear our buddy right now at the Barclays Center, Wayne Norman, you've got a story on Mr. Donnie Jones. Yeah, I knew him from back in the days when UConn played them, including the years when they were AAC members. He went 0-5 against UConn in those days. So yesterday when I recorded the uh, pregame interview with him, we kind of small talked a little bit beforehand. When he was on the podium yesterday, he said that we beat UConn the year they won a national championship. And I'm going, they did? I hadn't gone back that far. It was not from the AAC days. Well, he was a year off on that. It was the year after Kemba's 2011 national championship team. And right away, I remembered what it was. It was at the Battle for Atlantis in the Bahamas. In that game, UConn led 50-33. to That was Andre Drummond's one year playing for UConn. And that was with 16 minutes to go, a 17-point UConn lead. And UCF coached by Donnie Jones, who's the head coach of Stetson that UConn will play today, and his UCF Knights came all the way back, and they won the game 68-63. to Marcus Jordan had 20 points in that game, including some game-icing free throws down the stretch. You may have heard of Marcus Jordan's dad, Michael Jordan. He, by the way, I can still remember, wore goggles when he yeah, played the right, game. But anyway, that was the, uh, yeah, he, he, he's doing all right. But uh, that, that was the first time that Donnie Jones played UConn, and it wasn't the national championship team. It was the year after the 2011 UConn national champ. So, yeah, we go back a ways. We had a nice little chat yesterday, and you heard it on the pregame show a moment ago. Yeah, likely, Wayne. We haven't seen the starting lineups quite yet. We know what to expect from UConn. However, Stetson's been dealing with some injuries outside of Jalen Blackman, who scored 43 points in the win over Austin P a few days ago. It's a Stetson team that's good offensively, but as I just mentioned, the defense is lackluster, to say the least. Well, their starting lineup will likely be featuring four guards and the 6'11 junior center from Belgium, Aubin Gatteritsi. But uh, the guy they're missing, and I think they're going to miss him a lot in this game today, is 6'9 senior Josh Smith out of Indiana. He scores eight points a game, but more importantly, is their second-leading rebounder behind Gatteritsi at 5.7. He blew his knee out last year, the ACL. He rehabbed it. He came back this year, and in late February, he aggravated that, and he's done for the season. So they're missing their top rebounder. On the season, they are plus .5 on the glass. But without him in there, I think UConn will likely be able to really have their way from a rebounding standpoint. By the way, Zach, it is scheduled to be a 3-22 tip-off today, thanks to the overtime game earlier today. Northwestern knocked out last year's Final Four team, FAU. Yeah, we were talking about the fact that there's a couple of Final Four teams in the East region. Let's get to that in a second. Uh, more Q&A with the big man, Wayne Norman, courtside of the Barclays Center after 10 seconds for station identification on the UConn Sports Network from Learfield. Back with you from the studio, Zach Lindefield in Winston-Salem, Wayne Norman in Brooklyn. We had to hit that ID before 3.05 came, so thanks, Wayne. 3.22 is your scheduled tap time between the Huskies and the Hatters. And the question for you, Wayne, too, is the Big East. Marquette currently trails at halftime against a 15 seed, 43-36 in Indianapolis. The Big East, Creighton played well yesterday. It was tight with Akron right off the rip, but then they separated themselves from the Zips quite a bit. But... Even with the NIT and all the discussion that we've had about the Big East deserve more teams in the NCAA tournament, it's been, uh, again, like I said about the defense for Stetson, it's been lackluster so far for the conference. Well, now, number one, Marquette is probably going to get Tyler Kolek back today. I think that's a a big deal. Yep, he's got 12 points at halftime. But they're trailing in that game, so uh, obviously he may not be at full strength at this point in time. And number two, while the Big East did not represent itself well in the NIT, which didn't sit very well with the folks who were making an argument for more teams should have been in, you've got to give Providence a break because the Big East Player of the Year, Devin Carter, sat that game out 
as he has a bad ankle suffered in the Big East tournament. So you didn't see the real thing. And I would have bet that if Providence played in the NCAAs, I would think you probably would have seen a little bit of Devin Carter out there as well. Xavier kind of embarrassed itself. They were down 23, but they came back and cut it to two late, and they lost by two. But, no, the Big East did not make a good showing in the NIT. Yeah, and Butler is actually set to host the championship game. The final is supposed to be played at Hinkle Fieldhouse. The entire Final Four is supposed to be played there. Let, let's cover yesterday quickly and what we saw yesterday in day one of this tournament, particularly with Oakland and how it translates to our game. Sometimes all it takes at times is one player to change the pace and direction of a game, just the way Jack Golke did for the Golden Grizzlies. And I know Jalen Blackman's a heck of a player, but it's going to have to be a lot more than just one athlete for Stetson if they have an upset bid in mind over UConn. (coughs) And just to put that in perspective, he was 10 for 20 from three. He's not even a starter. He came off the bench, (laughs) so he scores 32 points. UConn's record, this is not NCAA, this is all season long. UConn's record for most points by a non-starter in the game was 33 by Rashad Anderson back in 2006. But by the same token, 10 three-pointers made. On 20 shots, that's amazing. I mean, Cam Spencer could probably do that for UConn if he took that many shots. But the uh, 10 three-pointers made, UConn men's all-time record made three-pointers is nine, set by Ray Allen on senior night in 96 against Rutgers. And I just did a little research to see how the UConn women's team, they've got three players who made 10 threes in the game, including Katie Lou Samuelson, who was 10 for 10. From three-point range in the AAC tournament in 2017, Maya Moore and Kalina Mosqueda-Lewis also made 10 threes in the game. That's the UConn women's program record. But that was such an important, such an impressive performance by him in that game last night to uh, pull off the biggest upset of the tournament so far. And the, the funny thing here for Jack Golke, I'm going to put you on the spot here, Wayno. 355 total field goals attempted. How many of those have been from beyond the arc? <laughs> 352 <laughs> I don't know but I know he takes I think but that's where most of his shots come from yeah 347 he has taken eight field goals from two point range the entire year and if you're really a stat nerd like I am counting last night and I know you are too Wayne he took three total dribbles the entire game last night and he just eliminated a team that 1.3 million people had in their final four so Whatever the future of Coach Calipari is, uh, I think not losing to 14 seeds would hopefully be in the future at Kentucky. Well, I can't top that stat, but UConn Samson Johnson is 86 field goals this year. 72 of those are dunks. That's yeah, it's a specialty too. stat from you. That, that was going to be one of my next questions, too, is for UConn, we know all about the starting five, but is there someone up and down this roster that you'd like to see a little bit more of here in the tournament? Maybe something you didn't see at the end of Big East regular season play and through the conference tournament? Well, I'd certainly like the play of Jalen Stewart the last two games, and he was 7 of 8 from the floor and 3 of 4 from 3. He had not been shooting well, but if he can continue that kind of production for this UConn team, that'll make them even better, make them even deeper. And other than that, you know, your starting five has been so good. Steph Castle's gotten better and better as the game goes along. The one thing that I'd like to see him do a little better is shoot threes. Last eight games, he's 4 for 20 outside the arc, but the two-point shots have been going in. He's had double figures in the last 11 games, so I haven't got a specific answer for that. Alex Caravan has not been shooting the ball particularly well of late in the Big East tournament. He was 4 for 13 from 3. You expect more of the way he's been shooting in his two-year career at UConn, so there's just a couple of guys that I would think that if UConn is going to win this championship and they're going to get the kind of balance they've gotten all year, those guys have got to start shooting a little bit better. Let's take a step outside of the session that you guys are currently at right now. We're set to play game two of the first session at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. And this is a two-part question, Wayne. Yesterday, what was your biggest surprise outside of Oakland, Kentucky? Maybe there's uh, an outlier that I kind of have in my mind that none of my brackets had either. And today, is there anything that you expect from today's slate that you're like, "Mm, this team might just do it the way that Oakland beat Kentucky a night ago? Well, we just talked about the Marquette game. I really thought with the return of Tyler Kolek, even though I'm assuming he's not 100% with that oblique strain, the fact that they're down to 15 seed Western Kentucky, 43-36 to at halftime, that is uh, quite surprising. And uh, also Oregon beating South Carolina, 87-73. Seeing the six seed South Carolina go down as Oregon really had it going last night, 87 points. That's a lot at an NCAA tournament game. 
Yeah, that, that was a, a late switch for me, and I'm kind of upset at myself for making the late switch, just like I did with Michigan State and Mississippi State. That's probably why I'm a bottom mean, feeder. <laughs> late switch in your bracket, you mean? Late switch in my bracket, yeah. yeah. I was at the game in Charlotte a day ago, and North Carolina represented particularly well, as they always do. Well, let me guess that uh, your bracket got busted like everybody else did with Kentucky last night. Yeah, even though I'm, I'm 30 minutes away from Rochester, Michigan, I, I, I did select Kentucky as, as much as it does hurt me to say. But you were talking about while we were in the break that Northwestern was really represented in that game against Florida Atlantic. But the UConn fans, it's not too, too long of a ways away, and especially in comparison to Stetson. How's it looking there at the Barclays Center right now? Well, from what we saw crowd-wise in this first game, it was a dominant Northwestern crowd. Uh, I don't know what the folks are at Florida Atlantic, but they're sure not here in Brooklyn, as every time Northwestern made a hoop, it was a pretty loud ovation. So you're going to get plenty of UConn people down here as well for two reasons. Number one, you're close to Connecticut. And number two, I think that you know the number one overall seed draws some kind of fans. UConn has had plenty of folks uh, jumping on the bandwagon, especially after how well they played last year. But I think you get a pretty good atmosphere when these teams play. And I'm just taking a quick look here. UConn and Northwestern have never played before. So the first two games of the tournament for UConn will be against newbies. They've never played Stetson either. Two more quick ones for you, Wayne. What impressed you the most about Northwestern? Obviously, UConn's got to get past Stetson today, but if they do make it to the game on Sunday, what would you expect out of the Wildcats? Who do we look out for? I know Boo Booey, one of the better names in the country, uh, right up there with your buddy from Georgetown, Supreme Cook. Yeah, Bowie had 22 points in this game and had a couple of big shots late. And uh, also Ryan Langberg had a 27-point game. He was 11 of 19 from the floor with four rebounds, the starting guard. So they got a couple of guys who can put the ball in the hole. One thing they did, too, that got my attention was from a defensive standpoint. Well, first off, Northwestern held FAU to 39% shooting. But secondly, they forced 21 turnovers by FAU. FAU averaged 11 a game. So they really got up in FAU. Yeah, the one more for you, Wayne, and it's not on the men's side. The UConn women are set to play tomorrow. They start in stores. They are in the Portland region, which is regional number three. They're the three seed against the 14 seed Jackson State. Uh, are, are you get, Now, you'll be hopefully in Brooklyn, but what are you looking most forward to on the women's side of things for this tournament? Uh, Elia Edwards just announced, I, I believe, yesterday that this will be the last dance for her. Paige Beckers is returning. So I know you've got tight ties to that UConn women's team. What are you looking most forward to for the UConn women? Well, I'd sure like to see Paige Beckers go off again the way that she often did during the Big East Tournament down at Mohegan Sun. Uh, Jackson State, a team the UConn men have a story about. 1993, UConn goes to the NIT. Jackson State coming up from Mississippi in the middle of maybe the biggest storm of the last century. They had difficulty getting there. I can still remember talking to the head coach at Gamble Pavilion that night about all the travel woes they had getting there. But the most important thing, they brought Lindsey Hunter with them. And Lindsey Hunter had a 39-point game, that overtime win by Jackson State. So as soon as those brackets came out of here at Jackson State, I was flashing back to what I remember about that game in 1993 at Gamble Pavilion. But I think the UConn women are playing really well right now. And uh, you know, with them... It's not about Paige Beckers. She's a, you know what you're going to get from Paige. It's more about what you get from the freshmen. And when Gino made that switch to going to the freshmen this year, and for the most part those freshmen did deliver, whether it's Ashlyn Shade or K.K. Arnold, or even uh, Q. Samuels, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they, they really changed their season around. And I think that was a great coaching move by Gino, and that's one reason that they are right now a three-seed in the NCAA Women's Tournament. Yeah, well, you know, they sure have been good. 322 is our approximate tip. That's the true historian. Wayne Norman. Starting lineups coming up next in the round of 64 as we get you ready for UConn and Stetson, the top overall seed against a 16 seed from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. From Brown Payne, Darrison Scott, you're dialed in to UConn Hoops from Learfield. Big Y, your family market is proud to be the broadcast booth sponsor of the Yukon Radio Network. Whether it's a meal for two or setting up a feast for the whole team, make sure to visit your local Big Y for it all. Grab some grinders, a party-sized pizza, even sushi and sandwiches. Big Y has all the essentials to satisfy even the hungriest crew. I'm iHeartMedia's Renee Danino, reminding you that it all starts with a trip to Big Y, your family market. It's more than food. It's my Big Y. 
Are you traveling out of Bradley Airport and need a safe, reliable place to park your car? Trust your vehicle to LazFly Off-Airport Parking. Located on Route 75 in Windsor Locks, they have both valet and self-park options to fit any budget. LazFly is open 24 hours a day and will get you to the airport on time every time. Join their loyalty program to earn points for free parking and be sure to ask about their corporate discounts. Save 20% by pre-booking online at lazfly.com. LazFly is the official parking company and a proud supporter of UConn Athletics. Keeping you ahead of severe weather is the most important thing we do. Hi, I'm Channel 3 Eyewitness News Chief Meteorologist Mark Dixon. And I'm meteorologist Scott Haney. We're doubling down on our commitment to you with something you won't see anywhere else. First alert weather. It's our promise to alert you as far in advance as possible. Simply put, when we know, you know. So you have more time to plan, prepare, and to keep your family safe. This is why we first alert. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Director's Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Director's Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Director's Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Director's Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. The Huskies live here. You're listening to play-by-play coverage of UConn men's basketball. Presented by Key Bank. Welcome to Barclays Center in Brooklyn. First round of the NCAA Tournament 2024 for the University of Connecticut Huskies. The number one seed for the sixth time in their history. First time they've been the number one overall seed. They face Stetson. The starting lineups for number 16, the Hatters from Stetson. Head coach is Donnie Jones. Uh, Number zero is Alex Oglesby. He's a senior guard, 6'5", from Gainesville, Florida. Averages 11 points, 4.5 rebounds. Tristan Gross, freshman guard, 6'6". He's from St. Petersburg, Florida. Jalen Blackman is their big gun. Junior guard, 6'3", from Marion, Indiana. Averaging 21 and a half and three rebounds. Aubin Gatteretzi is a junior from Belgium. Averages 12.7 rebounds. Also shoots over 72% from the field. And Stefan Swenson, a 6'2 senior guard from Brussels, Belgium. Averages 14 points and five rebounds. As Stetson comes in with a record of 22 and 12. For number one, UConn. Coached by Dan Hurley, Kamani Young, the associate head coach, Luke Murray, and Tom Bohr, the assistants. Tristan Newton is a grad guard from El Paso, Texas, stands 6'5", 195, averaging just over 15 points a ball game. Steph Castle, a freshman guard, 6'6", 215, from Covington, Georgia, averages 11 points, 4.5 rebounds. Alex Caravan, Richard Sopmore, forward, uh, he's from Southboro, Mass, 6'8", 220. Cam Spencer, the grad guard, 6'4", 205 from Davidsonville, Maryland. And Donovan Klingen, the sophomore, 7'2", 280 from Bristol, Connecticut, averaging 12.5 points and 7 rebounds a game. You've got a record of 31-3. and three. And the Big East tournament champions, as well as the Big East regular season champs, the officials, Courtney Green, Tony Henderson, Michael Nance. Now with more, here's Wayne Norman, some X's and O's on UConn Stetson. Mike Stetson, 22-12, and 12, swept through the Atlantic Sun Tournament with three wins. 6'3", junior guard Jalen Blackman had a career-high 43 points in that game against Austin P. He made five threes, but he also went to the free-throw line 17 times, so he can beat you from the outside or the inside. They have two good players from Belgium, the point guard Stefan Swenson and center Aubin Gatteretzi, the top rebounder. This is Stetson's first NCAA appearance. They're not a good rebounding team, and they lost their second leading rebounder to a season-ending knee injury last month. But they are a good three-point shooting team led by senior Alec Oglesby. So keys for UConn today. Number one, rebound and run. Stetson even on the glass this year, and the boards are one of UConn's strengths. Get those defensive rebounds and transition points and get offensive rebounds and second-chance points. Number two, three-point defense. Stetson will take a lot of threes, and they are number 28 in the nation at 37%. Don't give open looks to Blackman and to Oglesby. And number three, contain Blackman. 
deny his dribble penetration, and don't let him go off from three. Our keys of the game, sponsored by the Mitchell Auto Group. Mitchell Jeep is Connecticut's newest Jeep retailer at their all-new state-of-the-art dealership, offering exceptional customer service in the community for over 100 years. Uh, Stetson, uh, offensive-minded team, averaging 77.5 points a game, but defensively challenged, allowing 73 a game. UConn comes in, averaging 81.5 points a game and holding opponents under 65 a game. And UConn's three-point defense will be challenged. Huskies on the season holding opponents under 32% from outside the arc. And uh, this Stetson team shoots it at 37-plus percent from three. Winner of this game gets Northwestern, who eliminated Florida Atlantic in overtime. And Northwestern had to get a bucket with eight seconds left in regulation to force overtime, Wayne, and then had an outstanding overtime period and were able to win by double figures and knock out Florida Atlantic, who was a Final Four participant last year. And again, their defense really, I thought, was the difference of the game, forcing 18 turnovers by Florida Atlantic, and that eventually cost them down the road. Well, UConn has won 62 of their last 73 games. They've recorded 30 win seasons two straight years. Uh, They've done that. Another time in their history, 97, 98, 98, 99 as well, as they make their 37th NCAA tournament appearance. They've been to the Final Four six times with five championships, the Elite Eight 12 times, the Sweet 16 18 times, and they're led by Dan Hurley, second fastest Big East coach to 50 conference wins at 50 and 20, and he's extended that after winning the Big East Conference the tournament and only one man had reached 50 wins sooner than Dan Hurley and that's John Thompson the legend UConn being announced right now that wear their home whites and a, a raucous crowd we just sat here and watched Northwestern and they are well represented the Chicago based school and they are all fired up to take on the winner of this game I am interested to see how UConn defends Jalen Blackman the potential to go off on anybody 43 points in his last game and it wouldn't surprise me if they put the freshman Steph Castle on him he's got a lot of the tough defensive assignments on the opponent's highest scoring guards but I would not look for Castle to be on him the entire game I really think this will be a game when UConn rotates defenders on him put other guards on him put Newton on him put Spencer on him from time to time and Hassan Diar off the bench but I think at this point containing Blackman is one key to the game for UConn. They've got other guys who can go off and score, and their top percentage three-point shooter is Alec Oglesby, but I think it starts with Blackman. And the NCAA tournament debuts for Cam Spencer and Steph Castle. Uh, Donovan klingen has been there, done that, won a championship. Alex Caravan as well, and Tristan Newton. And Hassan Diara, but Diara now plays a much more important role, Wayne, for the Huskies coming off the bench. His contributions have been tremendous this year. I mean, the numbers aren't staggering, six points, three rebounds, three assists, but the shooting, outstanding, almost 48% from the field, almost 38% from three. Hassan Diara has become, as he was awarded, the best sixth man in the Big East Conference and a very important part of UConn. Well, UConn leads the nation in assist-to-turnover ratio. Hassan is part of that, in fact, in the last four games. 11 assists, three turnovers. Tristan Newton lately has been really good on assist-to-turnover ratio. 24 assists, five turnovers in the last three games. Cam Spencer's been lights out. He's number nine in the nation, number one in the Big East assist-to-turnover in the last five games. He's got 30 assists and four turnovers. Huskies have really cut the turnovers down for the most part in the last 10 games. They've taken such good care of the ball, and I think this afternoon that'll be a factor again. We sit courtside across from the UConn bench here at Barclays Center. Stetson wearing their road grays, trimmed in green. The Hatters, named after the man who invented the Stetson hat back in the turn of the century, back in 1900, and he actually helped the university get off its feet, off the ground, and really started the the Stetson University back in 1900. That's a long time ago. Yeah, they're in Deland, Florida, outside Daytona Beach, and uh, the initial name of the school was Deland Academy, and then when Mr. Stetson put all that money into the school, somehow he got his name on the school. (laughs) Somehow. All right, Klingon will jump up. 
uh, at center court against Aubin Gattaretzi. We're looking forward to seeing him. He's 6'11", the junior center. A the Atlantic Sun all-tournament team. The tip is chipped into the hands of Tristan Gross, and the Hatters have it. They'll go right to left, shoot at the basket where the UConn bench is as they work it. Stevon Swenson hands it to Jalen Blackman, who cuts into the paint, lost the dribble, regains it on the right sideline, and standing on the sideline and going out of bounds was Alec Oglesby for the first turnover of the game. Stephon Swenson wears number 30, but they list him on the roster as number 20 or number 30, so it's number 30 today. Here's Caravan, front court right. Fires it right to Newton against his own defense. Back to Alex for three, and Caravan shot his way short and rebounded on the bounce by Swenson. Here's a three from Stetson and Oglesby, short of the rim, rebounded by Klingen, and Newton runs to the front court right and hands it over to Castle off the high screen of Klingen. Castle fires in the right corner to Caravan. Down low they go to Klingen, who turns and shoots, and he missed it off the right rim. It's rebounded by Swenson. Runs to the front court. Gives it up in the corner. Gets it back. He's on the left wing outside the yard right in front of us. Backs it away at the timeline guarded by Newton. Swenson now at a left-hand dribble. Back to his right hand at the right hash. Looks for the high screen. Shot clock down under 10. Fires it right to Oglesby. Skips it left to Swenson. The left-hander fires a three. In and out. Rebounded by Klingen. Kicks it over to... Spencer who runs in the front court. No score early on, a minute and a half in. Here's uh, Spencer to Klingen. Down low to Caravan on a nice feed from the high post, and he lays it up for two. UConn's got their first bucket of the 2024 tournament. Uh, here is Swenson on the right sideline, guarded by Newton right in front of Dan Hurley. Out front he goes to Tristan Gross, a high post handoff to Gattaretzi. Gattaretzi on a hand up to Blackman, who spins right. They go down low to Gattaretzi, a little jump hook missed. He was guarded by Spencer on a switch, couldn't convert. Spencer quickly to the front court right, gives to Caravan in the left corner. It goes to Castle. He tries to drive by his man, Swenson, and he is fouled by Swenson, who reaches in. I thought of that second possession for Stetson. Steph Castle did a really good job. Playing denied defense on Blackman, their top scorer, not letting him touch the ball, making other people take the shot. Well, you come inbound to our right on the baseline. It's Spencer outside of Newton off the high screen of Klingen. He moves right to go alley-oop to Klingen, and he slams it home for nothing. UConn. Great feed by Newton. Uh, the Hatters now two and a half minutes in, looking for their first points of their NCAA tournament careers. This is Swenson between the rings to our left, guarded by Newton. Starts to his left, the ball off his foot. Swenson hustles, and he doesn't get to it, and they turn it over. That's the second turnover so by got, the Hatters. They've got five possessions, three shots all missed, and two turnovers. In the Big East Championship game, UConn had six dunks, and four of those assisted on by Tristan Newton. Newton just got another one on Klingon's 34th dunk of the year. Here's Spencer with a three. Rims in and out. Caravan got the rebound. He put it back in off the right side, a weak side rebound. And Caravan makes it 6 nothing. UConn. You remember in the Big East Championship game, UConn did not score. Six and a half minutes in before they got a bucket. 6 nothing. the lead here. Here's a three air balls. Off the hands of Jalen Blackman, and so far, the Hatters are all out of sorts. They have yet to score. They've gone 0 for 4, 0 for 3 from 3. Huskies out rebounding them 4 to 2, and they got their first offensive rebound just now by Caravan and the putback. All right, Newton against the zone up top to Klingen, and Klingen slams it home, and that's our dime of the game brought to you by Dime Bank. Community banking lives here. So the Huskies with a early 8 nothing lead. 16.53 to go in the first. Our first timeout. UConn basketball presented in part by UConn Health, the official health care partner of the UConn Huskies. From Brown, Pandaris, and Scott, this is UConn Hoops on Learfield. 
Looking to score a home run in the real estate game? Look no further than Lewis Real Estate. We're not just about the commission. We're about giving back to the community. With below market fees and personalized attention, we're the advocate you need in your corner. Don't settle for less. Choose Lewis Real Estate and make your real estate dreams a reality. Visit the Lewis Business Center conveniently located at 994 to 1000 Farmington Avenue, West Hartford. That's slewisrealestate.com. The exclusive real estate company of UConn Athletics. Calling all movers and shakers, those cranking around on crutches, the high heeled, the ready to be healed, the always on your feet. We are masters of mobility, healers of joints, muscles, bones. What moves you moves us. We are UConn Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, where we practice what we teach. Here, academic medicine, research, and clinical care unite as one relentless power. Because together, anything is possible. Visit us at health.uconn.edu. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes. Sync Sync My my Game. game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. The Yukon Huskies are on the air. This is Yukon Men's Basketball. Now, back to our Big Y broadcast location. This broadcast of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship authorized under broadcast rights granted by the NCAA through Westwood One, intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience, any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the NCAA and Westwood One is strictly prohibited. A couple of dunks early by Donovan Klingen. 139 on the season by the Huskies. That's an average of close to five a game. They go above the rim, Wayne, a lot, and they convert quite often. And updating that stat that I gave a moment ago, Tristan Newton has assists now on six dunks in the last two games. Huskies have had five straight games where they got off to a slow start, and this one they missed their first two shots. They've hit four of the last five, though, to go four for seven, and they've all been points in the paint. The score is 8 nothing. points in the paint, 8 nothing. They've got two layups by Caravan, one in a putback, and the two dunks by Caravan. Meanwhile, 0 for 4 shooting. Some of those have been open threes. They've just flat out missed them for Stetson. Yeah, I was talking to Caravan in the locker room yesterday about those slow starts. He wasn't worried about it. He said, yeah, we had you know, three or four bad starts, but we got back into the game quickly. That's not going to happen uh, on Friday when we open this tournament. So far, so good. 8 nothing. Swenson with it, front court, left guarded by Newton. The Huskies with the lead. Swenson, man to man, a one bounce down low to Gadaretsky. They're going to go against Klingon. He puts up a little jump hook, missed it. Ball tipped in the air. Clinton, a Newton comes up with it. Tristan to the front court right, top of the three point arc, into the paint. And he is hitting the face. And I don't know, he is doubled over and he is in some pain here. He was hit by the big man. Gadaretsky, who also commits the most fouls on this team. That's his 110th of the year. He got him right in the eye. And right now, Newton is not clearing up, it looks like. Three of their first four shots were threes. That was the first time they ran a half-court offensive set where they got the ball to the big guy, 6'11", Gadaretsky. All right, so Newton will inbound the ball to our right, and the official there is giving him some extra time to see what, if he's okay. And now he... Appears to be all right. It looked inbounded. He got it to Spencer, but off his hands, they turn it over. And Stetson comes up with a run out. It's gross. Into the paint. Hands off to Oglesby. Outside the arc, guarded by Castle. Fires on the right sideline to Jalen Blackman. Guarded by Spencer. Starts to his left off a high screen. Blackman into the paint. Trying to get a shot off. Fade away. No good. Back rim. Batted around. Newton came up with it. Newton quickly ahead to Castle on the right sideline. Back out front to Caravan. Left corner, it's Spencer who drives by his man and then lost it. Second turnover by the Huskies. Here come the Hatters into the front court. Out front, Gattaretzi. Tried to drive by Klingon, and a foul is called on Donovan. And so, that's the first on him. Looked like he might pass the ball back out to the perimeter, but instead, after he stopped, he started going back toward the hoop, and Donovan hit him. Under 16, media timeout. Dunkings. 
iced coffee with a French vanilla swirl, vanilla shot, sweet cold foam, and cinnamon sugar topping. Order your whole Dunkin's menu on the app for the Dunkin's iced coffee or pop into your local Dunkin'. America runs on Dunkin'. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply. So early on, UConn 8-0 lead. 1546 to go on the first from Brown Paint Derrison Scott. This is UConn Hoops on Learfield. At KeyBank, we know a small moment like, Huh, what's it like to have a yard? Can lead to an even bigger question like, Am I ready to buy a home? And that's the type of moment where we'll meet you, prepared to talk about everything you need to know when applying for a mortgage, so you can try to turn those backyard dreams into reality. Paul? Yes? Question. Are you a hammock person? You know, I think I might be. For every financial need, we'll meet you in the moment. Key Bank opens doors. NMLS 399797, Equal Housing Lender. The Huskies live here. This is the Yukon Sports Network from Learfield. Wouldn't it be great if life came with a remote control? You know, you could hit pause when you needed to, or hit rewind. Like that time you knocked down that wasp's nest. Uh oh. Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. To learn your risk, take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. When might you be buzzed? When you suddenly love everything. You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. I love our kickball league. Ugh. I love this guy. What's your name? You know what I love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzzed warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. I love your car. Is this real leather? Zach Linfield with you from the network studios. Quickly checking the scoreboards with a two-seed Marquette in the South region has roared back against the 15-seed Western Kentucky, 19-9 in the second half. The Golden Eagles out of the Big East lead it by three points, 19-9 in half number two. Back to the Barclays Center where UConn leads at 8-0. Mike? Thank you, Zach. No one gets you closer to the game than Sirius XM College Sports Radio. Tune in for news, talk, and analysis from the offseason through regular season and into the postseason. we got your team covered anywhere you go. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash College Sports Radio 2023. 8-0 UConn. Four minutes and 15 seconds in. Sampson Johnson comes into the ball game. As you identified a moment ago, they switched off on Blackman like I thought they had Cass, uh, Cass, uh, like that uh, Spencer on him, and now Castle's back on him again. Yeah, Blackman wears a headband. Castle is following him around. A handed out front. New man in the ball game is Trayton Thompson. He gives to Blackman, who drives inside. They go, alley you And a dunk. One-handed by Trayton Thompson. First bucket. By Stetson, 8-2, to two, UConn. That was well done. Newton, front court right, gives to Castle, zone D by Stetson. 1-2-2 two, two look. Newton has it on the left wing. UConn hasn't seen a lot of zone this year. And there's Caravan trying to go alley-oop into Sampson Johnson. The ball comes loose. Caravan gets it and drops it in on the left side with a layup. Is a nice assist from Spencer. UConn leads 10-2. to two. Caravan three field goals, all layups. Layups are good. That brings your shooting percentage up. Here's Jalen Blackman. Front court ride, shaking and baking, trying to attack Caravan. Puts him a wild shot. It's no good. Rebounded by Samson Johnson. That did not catch iron. And quickly to the front court right, it's Spencer behind the screen of Samson. They go down low on a baseline at Castle. They kick it in the far corner to Caravan and Caravan. Knocks it in. UConn 13 to 2. Five and a half minutes into this first half. And here is Blackman starts right. They double him for the moment. He's in some trouble. He gives it up on the right sideline to Gross. Gross drives inside on Caravan, puts it up over Caravan, and a traveling violation is whistled. And Diara comes in after the third turnover by Stetson. 
So the Huskies, after the 0-for-2 start, have gone on to hit six of the last seven shots from the floor. And great start by Caravan. Hit a three, but he's now four for five overall from the floor. And you're rebounding 8-2, to two, UConn. Newton front court right between the rings. Gives to DR on the left sideline at the hash and gets it back. Newton dribbles and gives on a high post. Bounce pass to Caravan. He gets it back. And the screen of Caravan. Newton picks up the dribble. And now he's in some trouble. Gives it up to DR on the right wing. Diara, little shake and bake move into the paint. He lost it. It went off his legs and out of bounds as he tried to drive the left side of the lane. Turnover number three by the Huskies. UConn averages about 10 a game. Their assisted turnover ratio we talked about, 18 assists a game for UConn. That's a tremendous ratio. But the last eight games, only 8.6 per game. They've really cut it down. There's Stefan Swenson. At the top of the key, he gives it up to Thompson for three. Front rim no good. Out of bounds it goes. And Thompson uh, from Glenwood, Minnesota. A transfer from Minnesota. Didn't play all that much. He did start 13 games over the course of the season. Takes a lot of threes for a seven-footer. 13 of 39 now on the season, 33%. All right, 13 and a half to go in the first. You count 13-2. Spencer out front on the left wing to Newton. They fire it right to Cam for three. And Spencer drains it from the right wing. 16-2 to UConn. Swenson to the front court, right to left. Reverses to the right side of the lane. Now off the high screen, he's picked up by Samson Johnson. Hands off to Gross, who attacks and puts him a 15-footer straight away and made it. The jumper goes in, 16-4 to four, UConn, seven minutes gone by here in the first. Mike Crispino, Wayne Norman, John Ashmead, our engineers, a spin move by Johnson down low, but he missed a left-hander, and it's rebounded by Stetson. There's Swenson fires in the near corner, in and out of the hands of Giancarlo Valdez, who just came in, a redshirt junior guard from Santa Domingo. UConn. Leading 16 to 4 early. Spencer will come out. And UConn goes back to Castle in the backcourt. A lot of turnovers early on. Four for Stetson, three for UConn. All right, Newton on the right front court with the dribble, and he fires it over to DR on the left wing. Hassan fires back to Castle at the left hash, almost turned it over as Castle was rather DR one looking. Newton tries a straightaway three, and he banked it in. Off glass from 24 feet away by Newton. 19 to 4, UConn. Here's Swenson out near the division line. Nowhere to go with it. Gives it up on the left wing to Oglesby. Oglesby, dribble penetration on Caravan. Stop and go move into the paint. Can't get a shot off. Is to Thompson on the right sideline. Backs away. Gives to Blackman. Blackman tries to drive on Castle. Can't do it. Nowhere to go. Now what? They're down to one second. A long three. No good. A 30-footer. And saved by Castle. Off the miss by Oglesby. And on the drive, Castle to the basket. Lays it in. He went from the left to the right. Donnie Jones has to call timeout. UConn 21-4. to 11.35 to go in the first. And they've taken the... Air right out of it for Stetson in their first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament. The top orthopedic specialists in the region are now in your community. Our orthopedic associates of Hartford now open in South Windsor at 25 Buckland Road near Evergreen Walk. Make your move. Learn more at OAHCT.com. From Brown Pandaris and Scott, UConn 21 to 4. With 11 and a half to go in the first half, this is UConn Basketball on Learfield. Duncan is dropping a new kind of energy. I'm Mike Crispino, voice of the Huskies, introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. It's energy for the fun of it. Available in two full-on delicious flavors, Berry Burst and Peach Sunshine. It's what you need when your afternoon needs you to get going. A revitalizing burst of caffeine, vitamins, and minerals gives you the energy to turn the fun up to 11. True story. Drop by or order ahead on the Duncan app. Fruit-flavored contains 0% fruit juice, caffeine from caffeine and guarana. Participation may vary. Limited time offer terms apply. 
Big Y, your family market is proud to be the broadcast booth sponsor of the Yukon Radio Network. Whether it's a meal for two or setting up a feast for the whole team, make sure to visit your local Big Y for it all. Grab some grinders, a party-sized pizza, even sushi and sandwiches. Big Y has all the essentials to satisfy even the hungriest crew. I'm iHeartMedia's Renee Danino, reminding you that it all starts with a trip to Big Y, your family market. It's more than food. It's my Big Y. College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free and available from wherever you get your favorite apps. Download the Varsity app today to have access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. The Varsity Podcast Network, now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today. Play-by-play coverage of UConn men's basketball is presented all season long by Key Bank, the exclusive retail bank of UConn men's basketball. Big Y, the official broadcast boot sponsor of the UConn Sports Network, supports all our local teams. Big Y, your family market. It's more than food, it's supporting local as UConn off to a great start. 21 to 4, they lead Stetson. With 11.35 to go on the first. Well, there's no surprise that UConn has dominated the glass. 10-3, the rebounding edge. And they've got Klingon and Newton, each of whom have two rebounds apiece. And talked all year long about the balance this UConn team shows. Well, all five starters are already scoring this game for UConn. And even though Stetson started off in that zone, they still are in the zone, but because they lost Josh Smith, their second leading rebounder, 6'9", 220 senior, uh, they've had to go to some more size off the bench. And Trayton Thompson does play off the bench. He's played five minutes in this game so far and actually made a three-pointer for, uh, make a two-pointer for one of their two field goals in this first half. But I think UConn is forcing them to use some of their size because they started four guards. You know, Alex Caravan leads the way with nine, Wayne, in the three losses. Only three losses all year long for UConn. Alex struggled eight and a half points a game, well below his average, shot 30%, nine for 33, and only four of 16 threes. So he's got nine in the opening eight and a half minutes. Good start for him. Jalen Stewart comes in the ballgame, replaces Caravan. And here's Stetson front court left. And Steph Swenson in trouble. Guarded by DR, goes into the paint, gives it up on the left wing to Trayton Thompson, who tried to spin in and get a hook shot off, but he lost it. And is picked off by Samson Johnson. Five turnovers by the Hatters. Newton, front court right at the right wing, backs away and gives to DR. DR between the rings to our right, and a handoff to Newton, who fires it left to Steph Castle. Castle to Johnson, top of the key. Samson with it, hands it over to Jalen Stewart off the screen. He moves right, gives it back to Newton. That's a long three by Tristan. Hard off the glass, no good. And rebounded by Stetson's Jalen Blackman. He averages three boards a game. Blackman, left sideline pass to Thompson. Thompson puts it on the floor. Now hands back to Blackman. He's guarded by Stewart on a switch. Fires a three. Back rim, no good. Batted around. Castle comes up with it. Gives to Newton on a fast break to Jalen Stewart. And he... Slams it down. A great fast break, quick hitter by UConn, 23 to 4. They have the lead. Swenson having all kinds of trouble dealing with Diari. Blows by him into the paint, dumps down to Thompson. Thompson, a piece by Stewart. They come up with it, though, the Hatters. And in the right corner, a baseline floater, no good. Trayton Thompson got the rebound and is able to put it back up and in. Off the miss by Alec Oglesby. 23-6, 23-6, to 6, UConn. Ten minutes left in the first. All right, Castle walks it across the timeline of the right and gives it up on a bounce to Newton, gets it back at the right hash. Out front it comes to Johnson. They work left to Diara. Out front, Newton. He's guarded by the big man, Gatteretzi. Now he, a couple of dribbles between the legs, starts to his right. The screen by Johnson gives it up in the near corner to Jalen Stewart. They fire in the right wing to Castle. He tries a three, and Castle buries it. UConn rolling early in this one. A 26-6 lead. And they've made four threes, four of seven. Here's Swenson lost it on a dribble near the timeline. He comes up with it. Starts to his right. 
Guarded by Diara, trying to blow down the lane all the way to the paint, and he gave it up, trying to give it to his teammate, Gatoretzik, but he was fouled by Samson Johnson. So with 9.05 to go, it'll be a side out, I believe. So the Huskies, the have, Hatters. Huskies have three dunks. Stetson has one. In the last six-plus games now, UConn with 36 dunks. The opponents have five. All right, Sh- uh, Samson Johnson comes out and Klingon comes in. Donovan will match up with Gatoretzi. And they give it to Thompson on the right corner. Back out front to Gatoretzi. He hands it over to Swenson, who starts into the paint against Diara, trying to alley-oop it to Gatoretzi, intercepted by Klingon. He gives to Diara, runs to the front court right, pitches back to Spencer for three. No good. Long rebound, Castle. Castle gets it back to Spencer, who drives the paint, dumps it to Klingon, and Klingon lays it in. What a great feed by Spencer. And UConn's already got... Nine assists on their 12 basket. Ten ball, assists, pardon me. Ball was a little behind Kling and did a good job adjusting and making that catch off through his left side. All uh, right, here's Swenson into the paint. He scoops it up right-handed and a foul called on Diara. He drove it right. Swenson has just had all kinds of trouble against the UConn guards out on the perimeter. He's, has gotten one shot off. Got one assist and three turnovers. Hassan Diara picks up the foul. It is his first. It's interesting, Wayne. They got two players from Belgium. <laughs> and I thought it was great that Donnie Jones explained to you Florida's got all those international players and all those prep schools. That's why it happens. Well, I've done a lot of UConn games over the years. I don't recall any players from Belgium facing the Huskies. Yeah, and you know what? Truthfully, I don't know much about Belgium. I do know Brussels. And one of their players is from Brussels, and that is this man, Stefan Swenson, who just made his first free throw. I like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Does that count? Uh, let me check. Our engineer, John Ashmead, is looking it up right now to see if it counts. No, it does not. Mm. All right, Swenson's second free throw is good. He's left-handed, and he's a, a senior guard. 28-8 UConn, 8-20 to go in the first. Here's Spencer, front court right. He deals on the left sideline to Castle. Castle up the high screen of Stewart with a right-hand dribble to Spencer. It turns and fires a three. In and out. A rebound by Diara who lays it in. How did he get in there? The junkyard dog amongst all those gray shirts got the rebound and put back for two. 30-8. to eight. All right, Swenson going one-on-one with Diara. Starts to his right. Fires in the far corner. And Oglesby's three no good. Batted around. And the Hatters come up with it into the paint. Blackman and has to back out of there. A lot of white jerseys jamming it up. Now he keeps his dribble. Top of the key. Try to shoot it and instead passed it to Wayne Norman. Actually, uh, Iron, Iron Eagle, really. Uh, TV guys are right next to us here. It's actually, I think Grant Hill made the play that time. And that brings us to the under eight minute timeout. UConn 30 to 8 with the lead. Mitchell Jeep is Connecticut's newest Jeep retailer at their all new state of the art dealership offering exceptional customer service in the community for over 100 years. 735 remaining first from Brown Payne, Darris, and Scott. 30 to 8. UConn. This is UConn Hoops on Learfield. Looking to score a home run in the real estate game? Look no further than Lewis Real Estate. We're not just about the commission. We're about giving back to the community. With below market fees and personalized attention, we're the advocate you need in your corner. Don't settle for less. Choose Lewis Real Estate and make your real estate dreams a reality. Visit the Lewis Business Center, conveniently located at 994 to 1000 Farmington Avenue, West Hartford. That's slewisrealestate.com. The exclusive real estate company of UConn Athletics. From the Berkshires to the Long Island Sound, this is the UConn Sports Network from Learfield. When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So, if you're high... Just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Sometimes I just cannot believe all the storms we've gone through here. 
can only hope that we'll be able to leave this house to you one day, baby. You're our legacy. Planning for these disasters will make sure we're safe. And it's the best way to protect that legacy. Protect your legacy. Visit ready.gov forward slash plan for the tools and tips you need to start your emergency preparedness plan today. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Points in the paint, UConn dominating 18-4 to in this first round game of the NCAA tournament. As we know, under the basket, prime real estate points in the paint brought to you by Lewis Real Estate, the exclusive real estate company of UConn Athletics. Looking to buy or sell, call 860-404-2655. And uh, Klingon is doing a job, and UConn's out-rebounding Stetson, as you would expect, 13-7. to I like the 10 assists, 3 turnover number for the UConn Huskies so far. Yeah, and there haven't been a lot of missed shots, so they've got three offensive rebounds on seven missed shots, but they do have six second-chance points off of that, and maybe the most unlikely of the bunch was Hassan Diara's put back a moment ago. He somehow was able to outjump the tall timber. He got up really high for that putback. So the Huskies having another great shooting half, 13 of 20. Remember, they missed their first two shots, so they've hit 13 of the last 18 shots. As uh, they, they've had a lot of good shooting halves lately, despite that first half in the Big East Championship game oh. against Marquette, oh. when they shot 30%, oh. their worst shooting half of the year, but they held Marquette to 32% shooting, and that's when they pulled away in the second half. This is not quite as good as that second half against Xavier in the Big East Tournament quarterfinals when they shot 79% in the half. Best shooting half by UConn since at least 2005. This one is a mere 65%. And meanwhile, they're holding Stetson to 3 for 16 as Castle inbounds on the bounce to Newton. Newton across the timeline, left to right, and hands off to Spencer. Now Castle has it out front on the left sideline to Newton. They pick and roll to Castle, who drives to the basket, gives it up to Klingon. Klingon kicks in the far corner to Spencer, and Spencer's three goes down. And that's just a beautiful piece of basketball by Donovan Klingon. To find Spencer, he's got six. UConn leads 33-8. to eight. On the right sideline is Blackman back to Swenson off the high screen. He keeps his dribble, goes all the way to the basket, and he's able to lay it in with the offhand. He challenged Klingon. He got away with it that time. And Swenson now has four. 33-10, UConn, under seven minutes to go in the first. First round here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. On the right hash, it's... Spencer down low to Klingon who makes the catch. <laughs> oh, a no-look bank shot he put in. Oh, man, are you kidding me? When you're 7-2, you can do that stuff. 35-10, to 10, UConn. Klingon's got eight to lead the way along with Caravan, who's got nine. Swenson steps into a three on the left wing, in and out, and it's rebounded by Stewart. Hands over to Newton. He sprints to the front court. Newton behind his back into the paint. Now he gives it up to Spencer. Spencer dribble penetration. Go to alley you catch to Klingon, and he reverses it home left-handed. Wow, that's sweet music right there from the smooth operator, Cam Spencer. Great assist. Now here are the Hatters, front court left, right in front of the UConn bench. It's Swenson off the high screen. He dribbles down along the baseline, guarded by Newton, and he's pushed on a hand check by Newton. Just an upset. Not a smart foul. And Caravan will come in. No, he stepped on the baseline. That's a turnover number oh, eight. Four turnovers me. by the point guard, Swenson. Yeah, Newton did push him, but I guess uh, he had stepped out prior to that. So turnover. UConn has it. Under six minutes to go here in the first half. Castle between the rings, top of the arc. Starts back to his right, kicks it over to Caravan. Gives it up to Klingon at the high post right. Klingon faces up. They're not guarding him out there. Now he powers it in. He gives to Spencer, who lays it in. A bounce pass by Klingon. A little bit of everything from Donovan. Got three assists on the day. UConn 39 to 10. Prior field goal, Spencer to Klingon. This time, Klingon to Spencer. Yeah, returns the favor. Eight points for Spencer. Here's Swenson. Into the paint. He attacks Klingon. Can't get the shot off. Now he spins and misses on a bank. Klingon got the rebound. Four boards for Klingon. Here's Newton. Front court right. On a handoff to Spencer. Who circles left. Top of the three-point arc, back to Newton. All over his head. They give it a castle down low to Klingon. Klingon goes to the left hand again and hits the glass and counts the bucket. 
as UConn leads 41 to 10. 4.50 to go in the first half. They've hit their last six shots. All right, Swenson out front to Oglesby. Oglesby dribbles left. Foul line extended. Guarded by Castle on a switch. Back to the right side. Blackman, he has been neutralized. Blackman keeps his dribble in the far corner front of the UConn bench. Trying to get a shot off. Can't do it. Now he hands it to a floater. No good. And a foul in the paint that time. Off the miss by Tristan Gross. And it's against UConn. So the last five UConn field goals, Klingon has three of them, and the other two he assisted on. They have no answers for the seven foot two inch sophomore from Bristol, who comes out now for Samson right. Johnson. Uh, Castle comes out, and Solo Ball gets a little run here in the first half. Castle's been outstanding in the first half defensively. The leading scorer, Jalen Blackman, twenty one and a half points a game, zero for four. All right, Swenson gets it in. Here's Blackman in the corner for three. No good back rim. And a foul on the rebounding action against the Hatters. Giancarlo Valdez is called for pushing Caravan. That last foul was on Steph Castle of UConn before this foul. Only three fouls on Stetson team-wise, only four on UConn. Uh, Newton across the timeline. Front court right on the left sideline. Tristan, a high screen from Spencer. Starts to his right. He left alone. He's going to fire a three, a rainbow three. That one almost banked in. No good. And it's chipped out of bounds by Caravan. It'll be Stetson basketball. Stetson 0 for 9 from 3. They're in the top 30 in the nation in three-point shooting, 37%. That'll go down. 4 for 20. Another brilliant observation, Holmes. (laughs) 0 for 9. Here are the Hatters. Front court left. It's Newton matching up with Swenson. He fires it right to Blackman, who drives it right. And uh, now a steal by... Spencer on a bounce pass, and he sprints to the front court left. Thought about pulling up. Now he will fire a three, and he knocks it down. Oh, Camp Spencer. I'm not going to call him a reluctant shooter, but he wasn't going to shoot it. Then no one guarded him, and he did, and he made it, and he's got 11. Five fast break points for the Huskies. Uh, Swenson splits the defense, dumps it down low to Thompson. Trying to put it up over Johnson, and he... Blocked it, and it ends up in Newton's hands. Newton into the front court, goes alley-oop to Samson Johnson, and he slams it home. 46-10, to 10, UConn. Well, the Huskies have been on a roll. They're romping 20 of 28 from the field. Here's the Blackman baseline three, and he finally cashes one in over Caravan. 46-13. to 13. Spencer fires it right to Caravan near corner. It's solo ball for three. Airballed it. Rebounded by Spencer. Still 20 to shoot. Spencer backs it away. Spencer now starts over with a handoff to Newton. They're down to 12 to shoot. Newton out near the timeline. Starts left into the paint. Alley oops to solo ball, and he is fouled along the baseline. Ball had it right in his hands, almost stuffed it, but it went in and out. He'll get two free throws. UConn, under four minute timeout with 237 to go, leading 46 to 13. If you got complex legal issues, personal business, or both, Brown Paint Harris and Scott gets you more than a lawyer. You get a law firm, visit bpslawyers.com. Ten seconds for a station ID from Brown Paint Harris and Scott. UConn up big, 46 13. This is UConn Hoops on Learfield. Are you traveling out of Bradley Airport and need a safe, reliable place to park your car? Trust your vehicle to LazFly Off Airport Parking, located on Route 75 in Windsor Locks. They have both valet and self-park options to fit any budget. LazFly is open 24 hours a day and will get you to the airport on time, every time. Join their loyalty program to earn points for free parking and be sure to ask about their corporate discounts. Save 20% by pre-booking online at lazfly.com. LazFly is the official parking company and a proud supporter of UConn Athletics. Power Station Events is the official production partner of the Yukon Huskies. The ultimate one-stop source featuring audio, video, lighting, staging, talented DJs and musicians, photography and videography, stunning decor and florals, and much more. As we celebrate our 40th anniversary, we want to thank Yukon Nation as we look forward to the next 40 years. Visit us at PowerStationEvents.com and let us help you plan your next awesome event. 
This is UConn Men's Basketball. Now back to our Big Y broadcast location. UConn women three seed in the Portland Regional, and they begin their NCAA tournament tomorrow afternoon against the 14th seed Jackson State Tigers. A radio coverage from Gamble Pavilion with Bob Joyce and Deb Fisk beginning at 1230 with the Hard Honor Group countdown to tip here along the UConn Sports Network, the Varsity Network app, and the Varsity Network. Dot com. And UConn will play that game on Coach Gina Oriema's 70th birthday. And speaking of birthdays, the UConn men's golf coach since 2007, Dave Pizzino. Happy birthday today, 52 years old today. And a member of both the UConn NIT Champs 88 and the Dream Team of 1990, Murray Williams out of Torrington, 55 years old. We think that a member of the 1990 Dream Team, Scott Burrell, is here. I went looking for him before the tap. I couldn't find him, but if I can find Scotty, I will talk to him at halftime today. Today is the 34th anniversary of maybe the most important and famous assist in UConn history. Tossed down court to Tate George for the game-winning shot in the Sweet 16 of the 1990 NCAA Tournament against Clemson, 71-70. And one note on Gino Oriema, I said today in one of the local papers that he's going to keep coaching i like that I, he's got the energy he's got youth he's a youthful 70 i think he's had all those accomplishments the 11 national championships all those tournament you know conference championships but he's still driven i like that uh, it's good to hear that he's he's not done yet all right so solo ball will go to the line to shoot a couple here tristan thompson picked up the foul the seven footers first and Ball makes the first free throw. Solo Ball, usually a spot-up shooter. First time he's been at the free throw line in a long time. Uh, Wayne, that was not Tristan Thompson. He plays for the Cavaliers, oh, or he yeah. did. <laughs> that was Trayton Thompson. Thank you. All right, Ball yeah. misses the second one, one of two. Two and a half to go, UConn leading 47-13. His first free throw attempt since early January. Uh, here's Swens in front court left, guarded by Newton. Looking to give it up, and he does out front to Dalen Blackman, who starts right. He attacks Caravan, beat him off the dribble, scooped it home off the glass. That was a big-time move that time by Blackman. He's got five. And that's where UConn defensively, as this tournament goes on, could have some issues with that quickness in the backcourt. And now a steal by Swenson, but recovered by DR front court right on the sideline. Back out front, it comes to Newton. Newton with six to shoot. Guarded by the big man, Trayton Thompson. Step back three, long one. Good! Oh, Tristan Newton delivered a three ball, and that was a fadeaway from 26 feet away straight on the basket. Buck 40 left in the first, 50-15 to 15, UConn. Here's Swenson out front to Thompson, and Blackman lost it. He regains it, but Ball runs into him, hustling to try to come up with the loose ball, and he commits a foul. That is UConn's fifth team foul. Mid of 30 to go. Castle back in as Spencer comes out. Fewest points by a UConn opponent in a half this year has been DePaul at Gamble. 19 points. Right now, a minute and a half to go. 15 for the Hatters. Alex Doyle comes in, freshman forward from France. He's 6'9". Trayton Thompson has it at the right wing and a handoff to Jalen Blackman. Behind the screen right, he tries to drive by... Samson Johnson, a cross-court pass intercepted by Ball on a run out to Castle, and Castle lost it. He tried to lay it up, and a foul called on Samson Johnson. That's the sixth on the team with a minute 17 to go. I don't know what happened. Castle was right at the rim. It looked like there was contact, but the whistle did not blow. They gave a block to Tristan Gross, his third block of the year. He got down there as UConn tried to run. They're outscoring Stetson 7 nothing on fast break points. The foul is called on Sampson. Johnson, that's his second. And so here is Swenson front court left. Guarded by Diaro, just came into ball game. Starts to his left. He's a left-hander. Back to his right. And now he tries to attack Diaro. Into the paint. He goes all the way to the basket and lays it in. That's two in a row against the UConn defense here. 50-17 to 17, under a minute to go. Here's Ball, front court right, back to Spencer, and now off front it comes to Diara. Diara with a right-hand dribble outside the arc, starts to the left, a screen by Spencer. 
Keeps his dribble. Looks to get it back to Cam. Cam has it in the right wing. Into the paint. Trying to get a shot off. He turns. Fades. Hits. Oh, that was a 360. How sweet was that from Spencer? 52-17. UConn final 30 seconds. First half. 13 for Spencer. Yeah, the first half alone. Here's Swenson. Stephon picked up by Caravan on a switch. Tiara's got a big man. He's got to guard a 6-9 man down there as they try to switch it up. Spencer picks up Thompson. They're going to run the final seconds down. As Stetson's Swenson, top of the key. Try to step back. Then he goes back and fires. And the shot goes in at the buzzer. And that ends it. So... The shot by Swenson beats the buzzer, and UConn goes to the locker room up 52-19. to Stay with us. The Key Bank Halftime Report with Zach Linfield coming up next. Presented by Brown Payne, Darrison Scott, this is UConn Hoops on Learfield. Are you traveling out of Bradley Airport and need a safe, reliable place to park your car? Trust your vehicle to Last Fly Off Airport Parking. Located on Route 75 in Windsor Locks, they have both valet and self-park options to fit any budget. Last Fly is open 24 hours a day and will get you to the airport on time, every time. Join their loyalty program to earn points for free parking and be sure to ask about their corporate discounts. Save 20% by pre-booking online at lazfly.com. Last Fly is the official parking company and a proud supporter of UConn Athletics. Duncan is dropping a new kind of energy. I'm Mike Crispino, voice of the Huskies, introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. It's energy for the fun of it. Available in two full-on delicious flavors, Berry Burst and Peach Sunshine. It's what you need when your afternoon needs you to get going. A revitalizing burst of caffeine, vitamins, and minerals gives you the energy to turn the fun up to 11. True story. Drop by or order ahead on the Duncan app. Fruit-flavored contains 0% fruit juice, caffeine from caffeine and guarana. Participation may vary. Limited time offer terms apply. At KeyBank, we know a small moment like, Huh, what's it like to have a yard? Can lead to an even bigger question like, Am I ready to buy a home? And that's the type of moment where we'll meet you, prepared to talk about everything you need to know when applying for a mortgage, so you can try to turn those backyard dreams into reality. Paul? Yes? Question. Are you a hammock person? You know, I think I might be. For every financial need, we'll meet you in the moment. Key Bank opens doors. NMLS 399797, Equal Housing Lender. College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free and available from wherever you get your favorite apps. Download the Varsity app today to have access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. The Varsity Podcast Network, now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today. Twenty minutes are in the books. This is the Key Bank halftime report. Key Bank is the exclusive retail bank of UConn men's basketball. Coming up, we'll recap the first half and check scores from across the country. Now, let's go to the Learfield Network Studios. And here are the Hatters. Front court left. It's Newt matching up with Swenson. He fires it right to Black, who drives it right, and uh, now a steal by. Spencer on a bounce pass, and he sprints to the front court left. Thought about pulling up. Now he will fire a three, and he knocks it down. Heck of a first half from Cam Spencer. Zach Linfield with you from inside the Learfield Network Studios. Welcome to the Key Bank Halftime Report. The score after 20 minutes, UConn 52, Stetson 19. The number one overall seed in this NCAA tournament in 2024 is cruising past the 16 seed and the 64th overall seed. Ranked team. As we check the scoreboards, it's been an important day thus far. A couple of final scores, including one from our region in the East, and that's a final score coming from Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena out in Spokane, Washington. SDSU, the number five seed, saw the the 12 seed UAB, that's Alabama, Birmingham, creep back into it. The Aztecs took a 35 to 29 lead into the break. But then the Blazers would find their way back. However, the Aztecs would hold on 69-65. to And as a reminder, last year's Final Four 2023 where UConn won the title as they start their title defense today. UConn, San Diego State, Florida Atlantic, and Miami were last year's Final Four. 
So three of this year's team, from last year's teams, that is, from the Final Four, are in the Eastern Region. Florida Atlantic just fell to Northwestern in Game 1 of our session today at the Barclays Center. So the Wildcats await the winner of UConn and Stetson, but SDSU will move on. So two of the four last year's teams, well, well, as long as UConn is able to hold on to this 52-19 lead, two of last year's Final Four teams will head to the round of 32. Let's get to the games that still have yet to tip off today. The Kings of the SEC and the Ivy League are set to tangle in the Pacific Northwest now around 440 after the Aztecs and Blazers just finished up from Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena. That's Auburn and Yale. The Bulldogs needed just two wins in the Ivy League tournament to punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament. They beat Cornell in the semifinal and won the title on a buzzer-beating jumper knocked in by Matt Noling against Brown. Yale head coach James Jones, with all confidence, spoke to the media yesterday about the opportunity to play Auburn, a tough team coached by Bruce Pearl, in a postseason game on neutral court. This year, playing Gonzaga in Kansas, uh, we had 15-point leads, I believe, in both both games, and uh, we led Kansas at halftime. That doesn't happen too often in Allen Fieldhouse, so we feel good about what we're doing, and I felt um, back then when we played Kansas, if we got a, an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament, that um, I like our chances playing on a neutral court against basically anybody in the country, and we got anybody in the country with, with Auburn, so... We have to be ready to play. Yeah, that's Yale head coach James Jones talking about the opportunity to play Auburn, a team that ripped through the SEC tournament. Remember, a number of conference champions are in the East region, including Iowa State, Auburn, and Illinois, representing the Big 12, the SEC, and the Big 10. Another score first, we'll start with the West region. Number 6 seeded Clemson and the 11 seed New Mexico. The Lobos are a popular pick to not only make the round of 32, but to make the Sweet 16 but it is all Clemson out west. They were up by as much as 18 points. However, the halftime spread is down to 14. Clemson had an early 31-13 to 13 edge over New Mexico, blowing the Lobos out of the water. However, New Mexico trying to creep their way back into the game. The two-seed Marquette, they would use an extraordinary second half to knock off a 15-seed Western Kentucky, 87-69. to 69. Tyler Kolick, who was out for the end of the regular season for Marquette, and the entirety of the Big East tournament, including the championship game against UConn. He played 38 minutes, all but two minutes, in the round one victory over Western Kentucky. He would score 18 points in his return on 7 of 13 from the field. Cam Jones for the Golden Eagles led the way with 28 points on 33 minutes played. One other final, it was a blowout. Three-seed Baylor beat the 14-seed Colgate, 92 to 67. We will preview the rest of the day in what is a busy day two in the NCAA tournament. UConn leads it 52-19 at the break. From Brown, Payne, Darius, and Scott, this is UConn Basketball from Learfield. Calling all movers and shakers, those cranking around on crutches, the high-heeled, the ready-to-be-heeled, the always-on-your-feet. We are masters of mobility, healers of joints, muscles, bones. What moves you moves us. We are UConn Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, where we practice what we teach. Here, academic medicine, research, and clinical care unite as one relentless power. Because together, anything is possible. Visit us at health.uconn.edu. Looking to score a home run in the real estate game? Look no further than Lewis Real Estate. We're not just about the commission. We're about giving back to the community. With below market fees and personalized attention, we're the advocate you need in your corner. Don't settle for less. Choose Lewis Real Estate and make your real estate dreams a reality. Visit the Lewis Business Center conveniently located at 994 to 1000 Farmington Avenue, West Hartford. That's slewisrealestate.com. The exclusive real estate company of UConn Athletics. Keeping you ahead of severe weather is the most important thing we do. Hi, I'm Channel 3 Eyewitness News Chief Meteorologist Mark Dixon. And I'm meteorologist Scott Haney. We're doubling down on our commitment to you with something you won't see anywhere else. First alert weather. It's our promise to alert you as far in advance as possible. Simply put, when we know, you know. So you have more time to plan, prepare, and to keep your family safe. This is why we first alert. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. 
Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes, Sync, Sync My, My Game. Game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow, uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. With a right-hand dribble to Spencer, who turns and fires a three. In and out. A rebound by Diara, who lays it in. How did he get in there? The junkyard dog, amongst all those gray shirts, got the rebound and put back for two. Welcome back to the Key Bank Halftime Report. Zach Linfield with you from our Winston-Salem studios down here in North Carolina. And it seems like the Barclays Center is the place to be right now. It's all UConn, the 31-3 and overall Huskies, and the number one overall seed in this tournament lead at 52 to 19. Let's rip through the stats real quick. Hopefully we'll hear from Wayne Norman at some point. He'll do an in-depth dive into the statistics. The starting five for the Huskies are led by Cam Spencer, who has been superb thus far, shooting 50% from beyond the arc. He's 3 of 6 from downtown with a 13 points, 5 of 8 from the field. Donovan Klingen has been efficient, to say the least. 6 of 7 with 12 points, 9 points for Alex Caravan, Tristan Newton with 6, Steph Castle with 5. That is the UConn starting five. The bench for the Huskies currently has seven points, one from Solo, two from Jalen Stort. Hassan Diara has the offensive board in the putback, and Samson Johnson has two points as well. Nobody dominating on the boards, however. Two are tied at three. Cam Spencer and Donovan Klingen, two apiece for T. New, Steph Castle, and Alex Caravan. Also for Hassan Diara off the bench. Tristan Newton, he was always a character for a potential triple-double, just the 10th all-time last night, triple-double put up. John Morant was the last one to do it in 2019. Five assists for Tristan Newton in half number one. His plus minus was 33 on the plus side in half number one. We mentioned those seven bench points. Points in the paint. UConn has 30 of their 52 points inside the painted area. 15 points off Stetson turnovers as they forced 10 turnovers from the Hatters. Seven second chance points on four offensive rebounds. UConn on the fast break has just seven. They have been settled into their offense, to say the least, against a defense that ranks 340th in the country. UConn has four dunks, 10 layups. They have not been tied. They've led this entire game on 31 possessions. Their largest run, 13. Their largest lead was 36. That was with 321 to play in the first half. Let's preview what else is to come today. We'll update that one score it's uh, the 6 seed Clemson 42 and the 11 seed at New Mexico Lobos 28. That's still at the half, but still yet to come. It is now set for a 433 tap between the 4 seed Auburn and the 13 seeded Yale Bulldogs. We'll keep an eye on that one as it progresses, as that is also coming from the East region. There are no other games that will come today from the East, as just before our game, it went to overtime. That was why our game was slid all the way back. The 9-seed Northwestern won in overtime against the 8-seed Florida Atlantic 77-65. to And the 5-seed San Diego State beat UAB 69-65. to What the rest of the day looks like, 7-seeded Florida will play against the 10-seed Colorado. That will come 5 minutes after the start of Auburn and Yale at 4.38 p.m. 8-seed Nebraska and Kasey Tominaga will take on the 9-seed Texas A&M at 6.50 at the FedEx Forum in Memphis. Then from the Barclays Center, I heard John Ashby has got a good seat for that one. Four-seeded Duke against 13-seed Vermont. We'll see how John Shire's crew with Kaya Filipowski will play. For the Blue Devils, number one seed Purdue will play against a 16-seed Grambling, who needed the first four to get in to this round. Four-seed Alabama in their high-powered offense against a 13-seed Charleston College. Another number one seed Houston, the number two overall seed in this tournament. They've got the 16-seed Longwood the fifth-seeded Wisconsin Badgers in the South region will play at the Barclays Center against a potential upset bid in the 12 seed at James Madison. Two more games to round it out. An 8-9 game between Utah State and TCU at Gamebridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. And finally, out in Spokane, five-seed St. Mary's essentially playing what is a west-sided home game against 12-seed Grand Canyon. Well, Wayne Norman is next. We will discuss what he has when we come back. The score, 52-19 at the break from Brown Payne, Harrison Scott. This is UConn Basketball from Learfield. 
Power Station Events is the official production partner of the Yukon Huskies. The ultimate one-stop source featuring audio, video, lighting, staging, talented DJs and musicians, photography and videography, stunning decor and florals, and much more. As we celebrate our 40th anniversary, we want to thank Yukon Nation as we look forward to the next 40 years. Visit us at PowerStationEvents.com and let us help you plan your next awesome event. Planning a move? Let Lip and Cut Van Lines, the official mover of the Yukon Huskies, take the worry and stress out of your relocation. Whether you're moving across the country, across the world, or just across the street, Lip and Cut Van Lines will handle your packing, moving, and storage needs with the care and quality they deserve. If the Yukon Huskies football team can trust Lip and Cut to get their gear to the field on time, you can trust them to get your items where they need to be. Call Lip and Cut Van Lines today for a free estimate at 800-245-8563. At KeyBank, we know a small moment like, Huh, what's it like to have a yard? Can lead to an even bigger question like, Am I ready to buy a home? And that's the type of moment where we'll meet you, prepared to talk about everything you need to know when applying for a mortgage, so you can try to turn those backyard dreams into reality. Paul? Yes? Question. Are you a hammock person? You know, I think I might be. For every financial need, we'll meet you in the moment. Key Bank opens doors. NMLS 399797, Equal Housing Lender. Duncan is dropping a new kind of energy. I'm Mike Crispino, voice of the Huskies, introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. It's energy for the fun of it. Available in two full-on delicious flavors, Berry Burst and Peach Sunshine. It's what you need when your afternoon needs you to get going. A revitalizing burst of caffeine, vitamins, and minerals gives you the energy to turn the fun up to 11. True story. Drop by or order ahead on the Duncan app. Fruit flavored contains 0% fruit juice, caffeine from caffeine and guarana. Participation may vary. Limited time offer terms apply. And here's a man who 34 years ago today threw maybe the most important assist in UConn history. Scott Burrell is here. Yes. What are your thoughts about that play from 34 years ago? Would you ever thought it would have lasted so long in <laughs> UConn lore? Well, first, I forgot it was 34 years ago today. <laughs> but, you know, I saw it on uh, Instagram. My wife told me about it. It, it. It's a great play in history. And that's why you go to college, to make legacy, build build a, 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 a legacy for yourself in, in UConn. And it's, it's great to see it again. Would you have ever thought 34 years later that play would still be so legendary in UConn history? I never thought it would be still legacy, le, uh, legendary. legendary. But um, it, it's great to see it, though. You know, it brought, brings back great memories. It brings back memories of my team, UConn, playing at UConn. And I, here at the game, I enjoy every minute of it. Obviously, in 1990, that kind of set the stage for what would follow between the national championships and all the success UConn has had. But it must make you feel particularly proud to be a part of the foundation of what this program has become. So true. I mean, I, I come here with pride. I come here helping build a legacy. And watching these guys, they're really good. I mean, they might be better than last year's team. And it brings joy. You know, it brings joy that you were helped building the foundation to what they are today. What did you see in the first half? I thought really it started with UConn's defense. Defense, it was everything. Defense, offense. They're just, I mean, they're, they're so deep. They're so big. They're so skilled. They play great defense. I mean, they're really, really good. So this team can repeat? I think they re really, they definitely can repeat. You know, you just don't want to hope hit that hot team at the wrong time. But talent-wise, they're definitely, and, and the coaching, they're definitely good enough to repeat. Tell us about your Southern Connecticut team this past year, 22 and 11. But, yeah. you know, they had a pretty good year. We had a good year. We made the NCAAs. We ended up losing the first round. We had our chance to win. And I looked down my aisle. My big guy right there, Sharif, Sharif Diar is right there. You know, uh, Hassan, uh, young, uh, younger brother, younger brother. But I was happy to be a part of it. Our guys got a taste of the NCAA tournament. Hopefully next year we come back and go farther. How much of a factor was UConn's 1988 NIT championship and you decided to go to UConn. It was huge. I mean, Coach Gallon was building something. And he wanted to help be a part of that growth. And, uh, you know, like like you said, it was it was before the year we had at 1989-90, that's what we lived by. You know, playing in NIT, we wanted to be part of the team to take the next step and make the NCAAs. How much of Coach Calhoun is in Coach Burrell at Southern? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. You got to be different nowadays. Times are different. You got to coach differently. But 
I mean, I, he wanted to win. I want to win. That, that's the bottom line, trying to win. Speaking of winning, who was the first UConn Husky to win an NBA championship? Was it me or Travis? I thought it was you. It might be me. I think it was yeah, me, too. Yeah, we, I just wanted you to say it. <laughs> yeah, I was first first, first uh, NBA champion. And you made Michael what he is, right? You know that's true. Yeah. Like, he didn't give me enough credit on the last dance. But I, I was the, in the last championship year, I was the driving force to winning that championship. Just joking. <laughs> if the, if this UConn team is going to win a championship this year, what do you see they have to do and keep doing? Number one, number one, play defense. Defense wins games. And they lock teams up. They're big. They're strong. They can play different, multiple positions. And they're going to make shots. As long as you have your three guards making threes, they're going to be tough to beat. That's our pal Scott Burrell, who had a big play 34 years ago today, but really lots of great plays. Scotty, good to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. Scott Burrell, our halftime guest here, is UConn on top of Setson at the half, 52 to 19. From Brown, Banderas, and Scott, this is UConn basketball from Learfield. Looking to score a home run in the real estate game? Look no further than Lewis Real Estate. We're not just about the commission. We're about giving back to the community. With below market fees and personalized attention, we're the advocate you need in your corner. Don't settle for less. Choose Lewis Real Estate and make your real estate dreams a reality. Visit the Lewis Business Center conveniently located at 994 to 1000 Farmington Avenue, West Hartford. That's slewisrealestate.com. The exclusive real estate company of UConn Athletics. Keeping you ahead of severe weather is the most important thing we do. Hi, I'm Channel 3 Eyewitness News Chief Meteorologist Mark Dixon. And I'm meteorologist Scott Haney. We're doubling down on our commitment to you with something you won't see anywhere else. First Alert Weather. It's our promise to alert you as far in advance as possible. Simply put, when we know, you know. So you have more time to plan, prepare, and to keep your family safe. This is why we First Alert. The rivalries. Sirius XM is your destination for all things college sports, and we've got you covered. On Sirius XM College Sports Radio, there's complete coverage of every major conference, including live games, plus 24-7 talk and analysis. So cheer along on the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. And now you can get three months of Sirius XM free. Subscribe now. See all for details at SiriusXM.com slash College Sports Radio 23. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Connecticut. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Connecticut and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the University of Connecticut. Back at Barclays Center, Brooklyn, New York, an impressive first half by UConn, 52 to 19. They lead Stetson, they're making their first appearance in an NCAA tournament, the Atlantic Sun Tournament champs. They've had a good year, 22 wins, but I don't think they've seen anything like UConn and playing at a high level. The Huskies have it to start the second half in their home whites. The higher-seeded team shooting at the basket where their own bench is. This is Newton on the right sideline to Spencer. Deep in the corner, Castle for three off the back rim, no good. Castle got the rebound, put it in, and he's fouled. He fouled it up. After missing the three, Caravan, I think, got a piece of it. It ended up in Castle's hands, and Steph will go to the line now to complete a three-point play. That 33-point halftime lead was UConn's biggest halftime lead of the year. But Coach Hurley wasn't happy going to the locker room because of the defense over the last four minutes. Stetson in its last four shots from the floor, and he basically said letting up like that will cost you down the road in this tournament. All right, so Castle... Completes the three-point play. UConn 55 to 19. Winner here gets Northwestern on Sunday. Northwestern an overtime went over Florida Atlantic, and it took a shot, but eight seconds left by the Wildcats, and now a turnover as Spencer chipped the ball away from Oglesby, and it ended up going out of bounds. And UConn Ten. able to turn over the Hatters. Eleven turnovers, and UConn's already gotten 15 points off those turnovers. All right, Spencer across the timeline, right to left, gives it on a high post to Klingon on a handoff. Castle circles right, dumps down low to Klingon, back to the basket. Klingon has the ball stolen. Swenson, nice play. A steal, four turnovers by UConn. Here's Swenson. Front court right picked up by Castle out near the logo for March Madness. 
Now he starts to his right, back to his left off the high screen, puts up a little floater and made it along the baseline from about eight feet away. So they've made their last five shots. Step. Stefan Swenson now has ten, first man at double figures. Four, Stetson, 55-21, minute gone by here in the second half. Mike Crispino, Wayne Norman, John Ashmead, our engineer in Brooklyn. First round of the NCAA tournament. Here's Caravan, gives it up to Spencer. High post handoff, Klingon, faces up, deals back to Newton. Newton drives right. Newton spins, banks it in. He went down the right side of the lane, hung in the air. Nice double clutch by Tristan. He's got eight. Absorbed a lot of contact and kept on going. And Swenson front court right. Left-hander hands it off to Oglesby. Oglesby on the high post handoff to Gatoretzik. And they're going to a weave. It back to Swenson outside the arc right. They're down to 10 seconds to shoot. Here's Blackman attacking. And a block by Klingon. But a foul is called as Auburn Gatoretzik was up in the air trying to throw it down. But they say there was some contact. So... Stetson will get a couple free throws. Mike, you and I were discussing over your French toast this morning about how <laughs> Donovan Klingon, for the most part, has done a really good job avoiding foul trouble, especially lately. It's really true. Uh, he's only had four personal fouls in a game four times this year, and the last time he even had three personals was February 14th in that game against DePaul. So he has done a much better job. But I think the message after the free throw was missed by Gatoretzi that uh, for Donovan, he cannot be off the court because of foul trouble. That hurts UConn. He was so dominant down the stretch in the first half. He had that 16-rebound game Saturday against Marquette. Tristan Newton had a 16-rebound game earlier this year against Villanova. One of two for Gattaretzi. And the score, 57-22 UConn. This is Spencer, front court left on the right side and at the hash to Klingon, or rather to uh, Spencer. And a dunk attempt 